Hi folks, um, hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. We're just going to uh, look at the historical reliability um, of the Gospels and I uh, hope this is a blessing to you today. So let's come before the Lord and ask his blessings. Father God, we thank you for today and uh, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your blessings and your encouragement and uh, we thank you uh, for your love and we give you the praise and we give you the glory and we give you the honor and so father I just pray that you would be a series of uh, discussions um, on the scholarship of uh, the historical reliability of the Gospels I ask this Lord in your name Amen all this information uh, can be found uh, on YouTube if you type in Timothy, Dr. Timothy McGrew uh, on who wrote the Gospels um, all the information that I'm going to be providing for you uh, is based on his lectures these are my own notes from his lectures and then uh, reflections about what he said so I don't claim originality uh, to, this, to these uh, videos uh, is based on uh, Dr. Timothy McGrew's uh, research and then uh, sometimes I'll fill in the gaps where he leaves off. Um, we're looking at who wrote the Gospels session and maybe in a few sessions uh, we'll be looking at other topics in the next few weeks ahead. Uh, like I said I'm spending time away from YouTube but I do like to do scholarly stuff. Uh, I do find it relaxing, and I'm just relaxing and sharing my uh, passion. Uh, in Luke chapter 1, verse 4, it says, It seemed good to me also, having followed all things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, that you may have certainty concerning the things that you have been taught. So I'll read that again in Luke chapter 1, verse 4. We'll read from the King James Version. Um, Luke uh, chapter 1 verse 4 he says um, uh, verse 1 to 4 uh, for as much as many take in hand to set forth in order to declare those things which are most surely believed among us even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou might, mightest know uh, the certainty of the things wherein thou hast been instructed. And again, I'll just read it in uh, more clearer English, uh, Luke 1, 4. It seemed good to me also, having followed all things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, that you may have certainty concerning the things you have been taught. Uh, notice there that Luke is work on eyewitness accounts. Um, just an aside, I've been saying this for a long time, this is not in McGrew's notes, but I've been saying a long time there's been a reversal in scholarship on this history, this issue about historical material. Um, we need to ask some questions. Uh, what about uh, who were the authors of the Gospels? Um, what are the uh, outer historical um, external information that verifies the Gospels. What about the internal evidence? Um, what about the errors or so-called errors in the Gospels uh, historically? Can we deal with them? And what about the so-called contradictions? We have to consider the issue of whether the literature that we're going to be looking at is authentic or not. Um, if a piece of literature has substantial historical information, then we do need to take it more seriously. Um, now, 
just an aside, uh, some skeptics will say that, well, we just take every bit of information and we have to critically scrutinize it and we don't accept it as genuine. It has to be judged, each little bit of information judged on its own merit. But we don't take that into consideration when we actually study uh, large portions of ancient literature, whether it be Tacitus or Livy. We discern whether that piece of writing has some kind of historical veracity or not. Um, we have to think about historical information, whether it has the criteria of genuineness, and that means that it's written by the person who claims to have wrote it. If we can show that the piece of literature is genuine, then there is less chance that it has been uh, doctored or uh, changed. Uh, so if we can verify some kind of connection to the author, author of the piece of literature, then that helps us to understand whether it has historical veracity or not. Dr. F. Strauss, The Life of Jesus, uh, 1892, page 69, says, it would most unquestionably be an argument of decisive weight in favor of the credibility of the biblical history. Could it indeed be shown that it was written by eyewitnesses or even by persons nearly contemporaneous with the events? <laughs> uh, these are my notes now. Um, the Balcom book, Jesus and the Eyewitnesses, shows us um, that we are beginning to see that the Gospels are based on eyewitness material. Uh, Bart Ehrman in Jesus Are Interrupted, 2011, page 101 and 102, says some books such as the Gospels have been written anonymously only later to be ascribed to certain authors who probably did not write them, apostles and friends of the apostles. So what do we have to say to that? Well, um, to be honest, that is just historically uh, inaccurate to, to say the least. He says some books such as the Gospels have been written anonymously well, that's not generally the uh, pattern of literature uh, in the ancient world. Literature was generally written with authority, authorial intent made clear. That were found, uh, these are my own notes. Uh, so I'll be bobbing and weaving through McGrew's notes and my notes. These are my notes. Uh, and so, so basically, um, these are notes that I have from studying his work and also notes from my own work. Put it all together, this is what we're getting. So uh, I just want to give uh, credit where credit's due to Matt Drew's lectures. Um, but uh, anyhow, if you go and listen to his lectures, you'll know where he, what he says and where I, I, I left off. Uh, so we'll leave it at that. I'm not going to keep saying this is McGrew, this is me, this is me, this is McGrew, okay. You know what it's based on, my talks, uh, so you can go and get uh, his lectures on the series. Uh, so, Bart Ehrman, Jesus Interrupted, 2011, uh, page 101, 102. He's been written anonymously at, uh, a man of his stature of scholarship should know that, generally speaking, ancient literature had uh, appendages um, on the scrolls to be able to determine who the author was. Only later to be ascribed to certain authors who probably did not write them apostles and friends of the apostles. Uh, that's just uh, a lack of understanding of, uh, of the history historical conditions of the first century and any century really of the ancient world. Um, there was a general acceptance when a book uh, that a book had uh, w was done by an author uh, because at the appendix of some uh, manuscripts you would have a part where the author was, was tagged on to falsification. So in, in the ancient world, the scrolls would be put on shelves and they would be classified and there would be a bit on the scroll where you could append the name of the author. So the very fact that was part of the classification system in the ancient world shows you that Bart Ehrman is incorrect in what he says. 
Um, if you want to look at the scholarship of that, uh, type in ancient manuscripts from um, uh, what, what is it? Uh, I'm trying to trying to think. Um, Pompeii. That's it. If you type in ancient manuscripts from Pompeii, uh, you'll be able to find uh, a town near Pompeii that where they found uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of ancient manuscripts that have been preserved in the eruption, and uh, that's the information. Richard Dawkins, uh, The God Delusion, 2006, he says, Nobody knows who the four evangelists were, but they almost certainly never met Jesus personally. Um, uh, this statement, to be honest, is, is unbelievably crass, unbelievably pathetic, shows you the lack of uh, intellectual integrity of the man, and shows you that he knows absolutely nothing about historical Jesus studies. Nobody knows, says he, quote, the four evangelists were, but they almost certainly never met Jesus personally. Um, well, you can read uh, the four Gospels. You can see um, the ancient technique of inclusio, uh, which was a methodology that historians used to write historical material based on eyewitness account, accounts. Uh, in the Gospel of Mark, you can see the inclusio methodology. So therefore, Richard Dawkins is tough talking out of his hat. Um, we're going to look at the issue of names, titles, attestation, and early use. The names of the gospel. Um, to know whether the gospels were written. Um, by the people uh, who, who are stated, um, we need to think about the origin of those names. So Dr. Darrell Bock in 2010 says, what commends Mark as the author if we are going to simply pick someone to enhance the reputation of a gospel when no one supposedly who knows the author is? What is Mark's reputation? He failed to survive the first missionary journey and caused a split between Paul and Barnabas according to Acts to the book enhance that gospel's credibility um, so we can see that if anybody tries to uh, try to write uh, gospels they would almost certainly try and go for uh, the famous names well for Mark uh, that shows you that on that basis alone Mark's a, a genuine uh, perspective to, to be a gospel Um, we also think, have to think, realize that that other names would have been uh, chosen. Um, you have Luke, who's not. Um, not as famous as the others, the other uh, as 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 the main leaders in the church. Uh, he was used, um, and then you have two disciples, John and Matthew. But if there if there was going to be um, false false gospels, they would choose the main names like Peter and James. But we don't get those names coming up for gospel. Uh, writing of Gospels till about the second century. Uh, so on that basis alone, um, the invention of names would would not be uh, would not be the case really. I think also um, the names are attached to the Gospels early on in the historical flow. Uh, you have uh, Papias, which is mentioned in Eusebius. You have uh, Irenaeus mentioned the names of the Gospels. Uh, and so there's an early tradition there that attaches the names to the Gospels. And that 
that early tradition, uh, you know, it cannot be overthrown uh, and just pushed aside like um, many people do. Have a look at the titles of the Gospels. <clears throat> if you, uh, if the titles had been invented uh, and were not part of the original uh, Gospels, then what you would see is you would see you wouldn't see uniformity. You wouldn't see within those titles and yet all the ancient manuscripts that we know of are, con uh, are genuinely consistent in in the uh, in the use of the titles they don't change they're not they're not varied so Martin Hengel in the four gospels and the one gospel of Jesus 2000 page 50 says we're not secondary editions this is the names uh, this is the titles we're not secondary editions but part of the gospels originally circulated these subscriptions were not added to the gospel secondarily long after their composition. So we see that the, the titles are very consistent uh, throughout the board in ancient manuscripts. Um, then we're looking at uh, attestation. St. Augustine says this, because about how we verify uh, a gospel has been written by a certain person. He says, in quote, because there is a succession of testimonies to the books from the time of Hippocrates to the present day, which makes it unreasonable either now or hereafter to have any doubt on the subject. Against Faustus, um, AD 400, Augustine says, how do we know the authorship of the works of Plato, Aristotle, Cicero, Varro, and other similar writers, by the unbroken chain of evidence, end of quote. So, we have, uh, in the chain of connection to the four Gospels, we have Tertullian of Carthage, 207 AD, we have Clement of Alexandria, 180 AD, we have Irenaeus of Lyon, and we have Justin Martyr 150 AD and Papius uh, here Polis 125 AD. Now it's interesting uh, from a scholarly point of view for example uh, these are my own notes on this uh, for example Irenaeus of Lyons 180 AD. I mean the scholarship just for Irenaeus is immense I mean it is absolutely vast so these dates are only provisional uh, we don't know the exact dates they're just general dates um, so I just have to put that in there uh, from a professional scholarly point of view. Um, the point is that there is this rich attestation um, early on uh, in the second century, um, 180 AD with Clement of Alexandria, 180 AD, RNAs of Lyons, Justin Martyr, 150, Papaeus, and at the end of the second century, 207 AD, Tertullian of Carthage. All these people attest to the four Gospels. So what does um, Tertullian say? He says they were written, the Gospels were written by Matthew, John, Luke, and Mark. Um, that's what he says. Clement um, says that Mark wrote his gospel in accordance with what Peter preached at Rome. Uh, he says that Matthew and Luke were published um, before Mark, um, and he points out that they have the genealogies, and he points out that John's gospel came last. What does Irenaeus tell us? Well, in, he says that the, the Matthew's gospel uh, uh, Mark is a disciple of Peter uh, and, and wrote what Peter said. Uh, Luke uh, followed Paul and said what Paul preached. And John was a follower of the Lord uh, and wrote his, his gospel in Ephesus. 
Justin Martyr says in 150, he calls them uh, memoirs and gospels. Uh, he says they were written by apostles. Uh, and those who followed the apostles and they tell the basic facts about the birth and death of Jesus Christ and he, there, there is um, a connection between Tatian and Justin uh, who was a friend of Justin and uh, studied under Justin to produce the Diatessaron which is the harmony of the Gospels which by the way from a scholarly point of view is massive attestation that of the four Gospels being early and authoritative. Uh, Papius uh, 125 uh, says that Peter is an interpreter of Mark, that uh, the oracles are produced by Matthew, etc. Uh, just uh, some scholarly notes uh, on Papius for you. You'll often get skeptics saying, well, there is a bit of a disparity uh, between uh, what Papias says and some of the other early church fathers here because Papias also says there were two Johns and uh, John, um, John um, the Elder, uh, uh, the Gospel of John. And... Uh, we have to just think about this. Um, the information that we get there is from Eusebius. And Eusebius has a bit of an issue with Papias because uh, Papias has a different view of end times than Eusebius. Eusebius is 300 AD. And the problem here is, is that because of that, um, Eusebius likes to undermine Papias a little bit. And so, I think there's been a misunderstanding there of, of uh, Eusebius' interpretation of Papias. Um, I think the stronger evidence points in Irenaeus uh, and others that it's the, gos the Gospel of John was produced by the Apostle John. And I think this text, uh, which is uh, stated by Eusebius, is a misunderstanding not from Papias but from uh, Eusebius. Um, now, it, what's interesting um, is if you um, look at um, the geography, if you look at the ancient world, uh, those names that we've looked at, Justin Martyr, Tertullian, Papias, Clement, RNS. If you look on a map, what is highly significant is uh, Leon's uh, Irenaeus is in Le in Gaul in Lyons. Justin Martyr is in Rome. Papias is in Hierapolis, uh, which is um, middle of what is or, or the front end of Turkey. Uh, Clement is here, and Tertullian is in Carthage. So right across the ancient world, on all sides, uh, there is an attestation to uh, the Gospels, um, which is pretty phenomenal, really, and gives strong indication and evidence that the four Gospels were written by the people who they were written and had authority within the communities at that time. So the attestation of who wrote the Gospels uh, is not only deep and not only uh, very important but off also uh, from a geographical point of view covers uh, a wide area and gives strong evidence of who, who wrote those Gospels. If when you look at uh, the Gnostic Gospels if, and you look at these other pieces of literature, they don't have the breadth and consistency of use throughout the ancient world in their attestation as they do as the four Gospels. Uh, and basically what that means is there is no 
there isn't a, a tradition that comes anywhere close uh, at the time of the early church that can warrant the same kind of authority uh, as uh, the tradition of the four Gospels. So now we look at early use and um, right off the bat if you look at Irenaeus um, and you look at against his heresies against the heresies uh, you will find uh, time after time after time after time after time the four Gospels and then he also quotes the Gnostic Gospels as quoting the four Gospels uh, and Irenaeus is like you know like I said 18, uh, you know 180 AD and um, gives strong evidence for uh, and and I think it's something like 19,000 times the early church fathers used the Gospels 19,000 times which shows you how much they were seen as authoritative uh, that information comes from Tischendorf's Origin of the Gospel, by the way. Uh, Polycarp, Letter to the Philippians 2, 3, AD 1, 8, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, AD 1, 8, he says, But remembering the words which the Lord spoke as he taught, Judge not that you be not judged. Forgive, and it shall be forgiven to you. Have mercy that you may. Once you meet, it will be measured to you again. And again, blessed are the poor and those persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 6 verse 20, Matthew 5, 3 and 10. So we can see, just an example there, but like I said, at 19,000 times, 19,000 times, the early church fathers quote the four gospels. And if that doesn't convince you that the early church saw the four gospels as authoritative, then nothing else will. Ignatius in his letter to Polycarp in chapter 2 verse 2, AD 107, says in all circumstances be as wise as a, as a serp, wise as a serpent and perpetually harmless as a dove end of quote from Matthew chapter 10 verse 16 and we could go on and on and on but Clement of Rome 1 Clement uh, 46 verse 7 and 8 AD 95 remember the words of Jesus our Lord for he said Woe unto that man, it, it, it were good for him if he had not been born, rather than that uh, he should offend one of mine elect. It were better for him that a milestone were hanged about him and be cast into the sea than that, that he should pervert one of mine elect. Matthew 26, 24, Mark 14, 21, Luke 17, 1 to 2. So, it, it's important to remember it's absolutely important to remember that if the early church fathers are using the Gospels 19,000 times you need to sit up and you need to realize how significant that is and you need to realize as a skeptic you have not got any grounds whatsoever in saying that the four Gospels were not first century literature and were not seen as authoritative in the ancient church um, but to top it all if you look at the uh, we have uh, Basili, uh, I think it's Basilides, or Basilides, um, AD 125. He says that each man has his own appointed time. He says the Savior sufficiently indicates when he says, in quotes, he quotes the Gospels, My hour is not yet come, John 2 4. Then the Gnostic guy says, this, he says, is what is mentioned in the Gospels. He was the true light which lights every man coming into the world. John chapter 1 verse 9. So we see very, very clearly that even the Gnostic Gospels, even the Gnostic Gospels quote the four Gospels. We just used uh, John there. Okay. And uh, if if we look at other evidence, uh, Polycarp's letter to Philippians in 108 quotes to Matthew, Mark, Luke, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, Hebrews, 
1 Peter and more. So, basically, when we look at the ancient world, the four Gospels were used phenomenally, absolutely phenomenally, uh, as authoritative in the ancient world. And when you compare how much the Gnostic Gospels were used uh, and seen as authoritative, it, it, it's putrid to say the least. Justin Martyr, in his Apology, says, in First Apology, chapter 67, And on the day called Sunday, all who lived in cities or in the country gathered together to one place, and the memoirs of the Apostles or the writings of the Prophets are read as long as time permits. Historical research into the nature of the spiritual practice of the church demonstrate very clearly there was a, a general pattern of how to conduct oneself in the reading of public scripture. And just a little note, which I've also mentioned before, that there are rubbish dumps, ancient Egyptian rubbish dumps that have been found where we found Gnostic literature and the Gospels, and what is found is the small, uh, the, the Gnostic literature is written in small handwriting, and the Gospels are written in large handwriting. What that shows you, which confirms what Justin Martyr is saying here, is the larger handwriting in the consumption in the public domain for reading out loud. The smaller handwriting, which that means it was used for private use. The Gnostic Gospels are written in small handwriting, which means that they were for private use. They didn't have the same authority as public reading of Scripture. Yet the um, the Gospels were written in a larger handwriting and show that they are, were authoritative and for public consumption, which backs up what uh, Justin Martyr is saying here. So, McGrew, McGrew concludes... And I'll quote him, uh, I'll quote exactly his words. He says, in quotes, The four Gospels and Acts are used copiously by the early church fathers. Even early heretics tacitly acknowledge their genuineness, which they would not have done if they could help it. None of the apocryphal so-called Gospels is anywhere nearly... So let's go back to uh, Bart Ehrman, Jesus Interrupted, 2009, page 104. We read, Matthew's Gospel is written completely in the third person. Even when this Gospel narrates the events of Matthew being called to become a disciple, it talks about him, not about me. Matthew's Gospel is written completely in the third person, even when this Gospel narrates the events of Matthew being called to become a disciple. It talks about him, not about me. So let's just look at Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. And Jesus passed on from there. He saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me, and he rose and followed him. Uh, this is not a, a new argument. Um, when Augustine was uh, trying to rebut uh, Faustus um, in about AD 400, he says, Faustus thinks himself wonderfully clever in proving that Matthew was not the writer of this gospel, because when speaking of his own election, he says not, he saw me and said to me, follow me, but he saw him and said to him, follow me. So Augustine points out, this must have been said either in ignorance or from a design to mislead Faustus can hardly be so ignorant as not to have read or heard that narrators when speaking of them as in speaking of another. It is more probable that Faustus wished to be bewildered those more ignorant than himself in the hope of getting hold on not a few unacquainted with these things. Augustus against Faustus.
Now, when we look at the ancient world and we look at ancient writing, um, this is exactly what we find, uh, as Augustine stated. In Exophon, uh, Anabasis 3, chapter 3, verse 1, and there are other uh, writings such as Caesar's Commentaries, Josephus Jewish War, etc. Uh, this kind of methodology of the way of ancient writers wrote, excuse me, can be found. Uh, so Exophon, Anabasis 3, 1, says this, there was in the army a certain Exophon, an Athenian, who accompanied the army neither as a general nor as a captain, nor as a private soldier, but Proxenos, an old acquaintance, has sent for him. So again, uh, that's Exophon writing about himself. According to Bart Ehrman, that would mean that he didn't write it, but he's not understanding that ancient literature often used this kind of literary technique, as Augustine pointed out. So let's just conclude uh, what we've looked at today uh, in this uh, talk. So we're concluding uh, on this talk uh, certain things and uh, first of all It's very unlikely that the names of the Gospels were chosen in order to push the Gospels forward above the Gnostic Gospels. Because three of those names were not seen as important. For example, Luke and Mark, and also Matthew being a tax collector. Mark not being an apostle, Luke not being an apostle, and Matthew being a tax collector. Uh, would not have had the kudos at all. Um, you would, if you're going to fabricate gospels, you're going to pick the more well-known names such as Peter and James, and that's what happens. We we get that fabrication in the second century with the Gnostics. Um, so are very clear that they've not been um, fabricated. Now, the issue of Gospel of John, that name is well attested in Irenaeus and other other writers. Um, as we look at the Gospel titles, uh, they are consistent in the ancient manuscripts and they're not fluctuating or changing. It shows you um, shows you that they came from an original source with those titles. That the authors wrote the Gospels is well attested and the reason is the historical connection is strong. Uh, we saw geographically across the board how widespread the Gospels have been used in the ancient world and so therefore scholars like Bart Ehrman haven't got a leg to stand on. Um, so those are my uh, statements today. Like I said, uh, I hold no originality uh, for the the uh, the basis of this uh, talk. Uh, this is from my notes in studying McGrew on his lectures on uh, the Gospels. Uh, I've interspersed his notes with um, my own notes, my own research, my own thinking. And um, so if you want to go over what McGrew has said purely on the basis of what he said, if you just type in Gospels in YouTube uh, and um, type in um, uh, Dr. Timothy McGrew, uh, you can have a look at um, what he has to say. Uh, next week, when I finish the series, uh, I will link to his material so that you can go and study it for yourself uh, and look at it. And uh, so I hope you, you get a blessing. So thank you for listening and uh, God bless you. And uh, we're going to be, um, we've got time, look at uh, another
couple of um, issues on the historical reliability of the Gospels, okay?